Nav Air Lakehurst is the world leader in aircraft launch and recovery equipment and support equipment. Our mission assures that fixed and vertical wing aircraft operate safely and effectively from aircraft carriers, air-capable ships, and expeditionary airfields worldwide. We're responsible for the design, development, and in-service life cycle support for all aircraft launch and recovery equipment and support equipment. So that's all the shipboard, catapults, uh, arresting gear, land-based arresting gear, uh, support equipment that services the aircraft and ensures that it's operational ready for flight, as well as the expeditionary airfields uh, and the visual landing aids. Occupying over 7,400 acres in central New Jersey, Nav Air Lakehurst is strategically located in the populous Northeast Corridor, 45 miles east of Philadelphia and 50 miles south of New York City. Everything you want, we're close to Philadelphia, we're close to New York City, we're close to the New Jersey shore, uh, so there's lots of opportunities to see those surrounding areas too. The highly trained workforce at Nav Air Lakehurst is comprised of 3,500 civilian, active duty military, and contract personnel. So everyone is very fleet conscious and focused on our mission is to help the sailor and the marine do their job. The people take a lot of pride in, in doing that and doing it well. Helping the marines, the sailors, fighter pilots out there, providing them with the necessary equipment to actually do the mission. It's a reward for me. Lakehurst is the only government or industry site that possesses the co-located and integrated specialized facilities and engineering expertise to design, prototype, manufacture, test, and repair naval carrier aircraft launch and recovery equipment. At our test facilities, we have the existing steam catapults, we have the new electromagnetic catapult, we'll have the existing Mark 7 arresting gear, and the new advanced arresting gear. The Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or EMALS, catapult system uses a linear induction motor to generate magnetic fields that drive a carriage down a track to launch an aircraft. Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System is the next generation of the steam cat. Steam catapult really is set up, uh, for lack of a better term, like a shotgun, an open loop control system. Put steam behind it, let go of the valve, shoot an aircraft off the end of the deck. What an EMALS does is it's an electromagnetic version of that, a closed loop control system. EMALS is an upgrade of the steam catapult. It reduces stress on the airframe at takeoff, requires less maintenance and manpower to operate. It provides a more reliable aircraft launch with a reduction in power consumption. We've got steam catapults up here. Uh, we have actually two different types of steam catapults up here now for, for many, many years, and we use them to test all new aircraft as well as test modifications to the catapults. Uh, so we'll do the same thing with the emails. Email system will be here for, for many decades to uh, test new aircraft as they enter the inventory, including UAVs, and uh, to test future modifications to the catapult. The Advanced Arresting Gear, or AAG, is an electric motor-based recovery system designed to replace the hydraulic recovery system. It allows the arrestment of heavier, faster aircraft while also reducing maintenance and manning and provides more control and safety features. Advanced Arresting Gear is going to be the new recovery system on board the new Ford class of aircraft carriers uh, and also backfitted on the Nimitz class carriers. The, the present system, which is the Mark 7, has been in use for, for over 40 years, so it was time to upgrade that and as we get new aircraft into the fleet, Advanced Arresting Gear will take us well into the 21st century. Nav Air Lakehurst provides more than 6,700 delivered items per year to the fleet. The in-service engineering teams provide an average of 17 shipboard technical assists and five remote assists bi-weekly to Navy ships worldwide. And one of the areas that we feel especially proud of is the prototype and manufacturing area. My name is Glenn Henderson. I'm a machinist journeyman here at Lakehurst, New Jersey. We manufacture launch and recovery parts for aircraft carriers in the fleet. I started in 1984. We were trained next door in Hangar 1, and after it was determined that we were capable of doing the work, we were tasked to different journeymen who have been in the fleet for years upon years. So we learned from the old school first and then developed into the new technology. This morning we're running the GNL Turning Center. It's a 15U. 
It's capable of turning precision parts for launch valve support as well as prototype manufacturing. We take a valve body that's, that's got its maximum shot life on it, disassemble it, repair it, QA it, reassemble it, and then hot test it and send it back to the fleet. So basically we're new lamps for old, but in doing so we're saving the Navy a lot of money by not having to go out and, and create these components from scratch. We pride ourselves here in being able to transfer from machine to machine as the necessity dictates. It's not uncommon for us to be tasked with jobs that may keep us here to the wee hours of the morning. We're very proud in the fact that without us, you don't have a functional carrier Navy, and a carrier Navy supports United States interest around the world. When we do have pilots that come through, they realize that without our equipment, they're gonna sit there on, on the deck, you know, and, and their job is to go flying, and we make that possible. The Integrated Logistics Support Program at NAVAIR Lakehurst works to develop and integrate new and emerging technology to improve maintenance and provide the tools needed to maximize fleet readiness. I'm Russell Shannon. I'm the lead systems engineer for Integrated Diagnostics and Automated Test Systems 4813, which is the systems engineering for avionics systems. Supporting our, our aircraft developmental programs in terms of avionic diagnostics, supportability, and testability working with the aircraft platforms from the very early stages of, of concept refinement and design to make sure that when the aircraft is fielded, it's as supportable and testable as possible. This room is what we call our prototype development area. This is where we might, might bring in a, an avionics box, open it up, do some analysis. We might create our own circuit cards. We can do also some more in-depth analysis. These are example circuit cards that we've made using the capabilities that we have in this laboratory in terms of uh, circuit card fabrication, population. We can, can develop our own prototypes here using this, these technologies. This room is, is our control room. This is, is where our, our scientists can sit in safety and comfort and control uh, tests going on on our avionics boxes in, in, the, next, in the next room. It's, it has a soundproofing because we're going to generate a lot of noise. A lot of these avionics boxes generate a lot of noise when they're, when, when they're run due to cooling requirements and, and things like that. We also have a very noisy lab around the other side of the wall, so it's to protect them and to protect us. The, the tools that we're trying to develop here and the tests that we're doing and, and the, the prototypes that we're building are all focused on helping the maintainer and helping them do their job quicker, faster, to, to get more aircraft operational availability. Lakers has a rich history in relation to naval aviation. The base served as the center of airship development in the United States and housed three of the Navy's four rigid airships in addition to many Navy blimps. Today, the base is part of the Naval Air Systems Command. The base milestones naturally would be the commissioning of the base in 1919 as a Naval Air Station. The fact that the Graf Zeppelin and the Hindenburg flew here from Germany and landed in America at Lakehurst. To this day, Lakehurst has the official title as the first international airport. During the 1950s, Lakehurst was the only naval air station that housed fixed-wing, rotary, and jet aircraft. In 1956, Lakehurst was the site of the first aircraft ejection seat test. NAVAIR Lakehurst is ranked among the top 60 employers in the state of New Jersey, with an average annual salary about 16 percent above the statewide average. Lakehurst is proud of its diversified workforce, who offers a wealth of technical, business, and leadership expertise. As far as the mix of employees here at Lakehurst, it, it varies in age from right out of college um, to someone who's been around here 35, 40 years. People are very supportive. Um, it's not just work and go home. Oh, this is a very tight-knit community. You know, I, I, a lot of these people I don't call just co-workers. I call, call them my friends. The atmosphere here is very welcoming, and the, the community itself is a very welcoming crowd who's eager to help you and show you what you need to know. The workforce is comprised of senior-level program managers and engineers who in turn mentor junior team leaders and engineers, constantly expanding the knowledge of the workforce to prepare for future projects. I would eventually like to become a mentor to help out younger employees and to develop their career paths as well. One phrase that we truly believe in here at NAVAIR Lakehurst is service to the fleet. 
We all take quite a sense of accomplishment and pride in when we can help the warfighter or we can reduce maintenance or help solve a problem. When you see the warfighter's face, the sailor and the marine, and their life banks, you really help me out. It just makes you feel good that you're able to do something so they can do their job. In short, NAVAIR Laker supports all the aircraft that operate from ships at sea, as well as aircraft that operate from Marine Corps Expeditionary Airfields. The diverse team of engineers, technicians, logisticians, acquisition experts, skilled technical artisans, and administrative personnel continue forward with a heritage of service to the fleet as they remain the leader in aircraft launch and recovery equipment and support equipment as a model installation for the future.